Welcome to Historically Speaking. I'm your host, Michael Dwyer. Our topic this time is Around the World in 80 Countries, A Stamp Collector's Perspective, Part 1. Three years ago, I did a show on stamp collecting, particularly featuring my United States stamp album. And since then, I've thought more about what my stamp collection meant to me. And just to go over a little bit of familiar ground, stamp collecting as a hobby has truly plummeted in the 21st century. There are very few people today that I know under 50 who have collected stamps. And as a result of it becoming a less popular hobby, what were once considered to be very valuable stamps really aren't worth what people put into it. And as I did a little bit of research for this show, I discovered that one person who had a great deal of sway over the stamp collecting his, uh, industry was Henry Harris of Boston, H.E. Harris, who manufactured a large number of stamp albums, stamp approval programs, various stamp products. And this was my second world stamp album, The Statesman, which I purchased 51 years ago for $6.95. Now, if that seems like an incredible bargain, you have to realize that $6.95 all these years later would be about $50. So we are going to begin with a look at several of the reasons why I have just loved stamp collecting. I have four representative stamps here that each in their own way say something about stamp collecting. The first is a mourning stamp from 1935. This was my favorite stamp in my mother's stamp album from the World War II era. It is from Belgium and it doesn't have a name on it. So how would I go about finding who this person was. I would go to the public library and they would have a Scott's catalog of world stamps which was illustrated and as it turns out this is Queen Astrid of Belgium who was killed in 1935 in a car accident in Switzerland. She was the wife of King Leopold III of Belgium, and just to put her family genealogy in perspective, those of you that saw the uh, recent television program Atlantic Crossing about Crown Princess Martha of Sweden, uh, she is Crown Princess Martha's sister. She was Astrid of Sweden. In the next stamp down, I think most of you would recognize this stamp from Monaco from the 19th of April, 1956, which is the wedding of Grace Kelly and Prince Rainier. And Rutlanders are very proud. The Costello family of Rutland is related to Princess Grace. The third stamp down is what requires some deciphering because it's mostly written in Cyrillic, and I would have to have used a reference guide to figure out the identity and the country. So what we have written in Cyrillic is the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats, and Slovenes, because this is what became Yugoslavia after the breakup of the Balkan countries in World War I. And here we have in profile on the image King Alexander of what became Yugoslavia. And lastly, a stamp from Ireland, which is a beckoning into history because I would have to look up who Wolf Tone was. And Wolf Tone was considered to be an Irish hero who led an aborted rebellion with the help of the French in 1798 
and he died in prison under mysterious circumstances. So let's begin our trip through 40 countries in this first installment. We have to begin where it all started on May 1st, 1840, with a penny black, which is the world's first postage stamp showing a young Queen Victoria in profile. It was imperforate, which meant that it didn't have the little tears. You would have to cut it apart. This is a used one. And surprisingly, it's not worth a lot of money because this was so wildly popular, people bought sheets and sheets of them. Although this is the world's first postage stamp, it varies in price what a used copy would go for today, but not more than $30 or $40, if that. Afghanistan. Stamps from 1963. What I found unusual in selecting these is it says post Afghan. Why would a country that has um, Islamic heritage and Arabic script have a French description on the stamps? And that is because many countries throughout the world belong to the International Postage Union, which was headquartered in Paris. And at the time that it was founded, probably in the 1880s, French was considered to be the language of diplomacy. Ajman. Most of us would have to look up in a gazetteer where Ajman is. It is one of the United Arab Emirates. And what I found interesting about these, uh, these depictions is they show Napoleon as emperor. When Napoleon Bonaparte was crowned as emperor of France in 1801 by the artist Gérard. So you wonder, why would a country in that part of the world pay homage to Napoleon of France. And maybe it was because they were just entranced with the majesty and the spectacle that this ceremony represented. Argentina, a wide selection of stamps here that show some of Argent Argentina's uh, history. The one that you will recognize the most, where I have the arrow, at the left-hand side, second row, is Evita Perón, who died in the early 1950s. She was the subject of the musical Evita. And here we have uh, one of the heroes of Argentina depicted on several of the stamps, Jose de San Martín. Australia. Now, Australia, which has been a British colony, it's part of the Commonwealth now uh, since um, the 1780s, and I wondered why they didn't have stamps until 1913. And in the beginning, their stamps were not a particularly striking lot. You can see the map of Australia with the silhouette of the kangaroo, and we have some images here of King George V from the World War I era, and then as we look towards the lower row, we can see the green stamp of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, who lived to be 102 years old. Austria, Österreich. And again, uh, you can see the Habsburg crest here on many of these stamps. And the arrow points to the Emperor Franz Joseph, who was one of the longest reigning rulers in history from 1848 until 1916. Bahamas. The Bahamas, of course, at the time that I was collecting stamps was part of the British Commonwealth, and one of the things that distinguishes many of these Commonwealth stamps is the fact that they usually bore somewhere on the stamp the image of the young Queen Elizabeth. These are stamps from Belgium, 
And in the top row, we have King Leopold II of Belgium, who goes down in history as being one of the most notorious imperialists for the way that he oppressed people in the Congo. In the third row, we have King Albert, uh, who is his son. He was the King of Belgium during World War I. And in the lower right-hand corner, we have another example like that of Queen Astrid of a mourning stamp when King Albert uh, died in 1934. One of the f fun aspects of collecting stamps is that people would often go to the post office and buy stamps for me, new stamps. And as you can see by what I wrote here, my parents who spent the week of their wedding anniversary in Bermuda in 1973 went to the post office for me and bought these beautiful flower stamps. Brazil. What I find interesting here uh, is the various aspects of Brazil culture, um, which is very indigenous to Brazil, but they thought enough uh, to honor the visit of Queen Elizabeth uh, to Brazil in 1968. Bulgaria. Once again here, you can tell pretty much uh, that the Bulgaria, the name is there. Some of them, uh, the uh, name is in Cyrillic, so uh, the, the first one is Cyrillic. The second one is um, in uh, English script, and these are honoring the 1960 Olympics. Cameroon. Cameroon, one of the uh, French um, territories uh, in Africa. And what is very interesting here is what you see on the top where it says France Libre, because these were issued from free France during World War II, when free France was more of an entity under Charles de Gaulle in England because all of France had been overrun by the Nazis. And yet, uh, in France's various colonies, they would issue stamps that would say France Libre. This is a slight variation in my album collection because I bought an album just for Canadian stamps. And they were a little bit more descriptive about uh, what you, where you could put your stamps. And unfortunately, my Canadian album is about 80% uh, empty. I just didn't have the time to continue specializing in Canadian stamps, but I thought this was interesting of uh, the visit of King George VI and Queen Elizabeth to Canada and to the United States in the summer of 1939, just before the outbreak of World War II. And from Canada, King George and Queen Elizabeth made their way to uh, Hyde Park, New York, where there are famous newsreel images of the Queen eating a hot dog for the first time. Stamps from the Canal Zone, when it was um, an American territory. And some of the people that are being honored here are General Goethals and Gorgas, who were responsible for the engineering wonder of the Panama Canal. Chile, once again, uh, honoring some of its national heroes. And one of the unlikely Chilean heroes is named Bernardo O'Higgins. Uh, obviously from Ireland, but a very important force in Chilean history as part of the overthrow of the Spanish Empire. And many of the countries in South America that uh, achieved independence from Spain did so during the Napoleonic Wars when the King of Spain w was too busy fighting off the French to have an active intervention in what was happening in the Southern Hemisphere. This is China, 
and uh, there are many examples that I could have chosen of Chinese stamps, but I thought it would be interesting in the top row to point out to you in the green stamp Sun Yat-sen, who was the leader of the Nationalist Party. He is considered to be uh, the founder of Nationalist China after the overthrow of the last emperor. And in the third row, in the lower uh, right corner, we have his son-in-law, who was the leader of Nationalist China for many years, uh, and that we learned him in school is Chiang Kai-shek, and uh, more representative of him in uh, modern Chinese is Zhang Zhizhi. Colombia. And the stamp that I want to feature here is one that is a Pan-American Congress, and the arrow is pointing to Ferdinand and Isabella, who of course were the monarchs that sent Columbus across the ocean blue. And Columbia is named after Christopher Columbus. Belgian Congo. We have stamps from the Republic of the Congo and a mourning stamp. Once again, this uh, is a, another good counterpart to the one that we started with, with Queen Astrid, and this is King Albert. Costa Rica. These came from my mother's stamp album. They have a real Art Deco feel uh, for them from the 1930s. And in case you're wondering why there is a rip in the two cent stamp, is that my mother often, when she had fairly new stamps, just pasted them into her album. And sometimes I was successful in getting them out of the album, and at other times they tore, as you can see in that one. These are stamps from Cuba and quite a variety over many, many years, pointing to the ones that are on the lower right-hand corner. This was Cuba uh, before the Spanish-American War of 1898, and you have King Alfonso XII of Spain and the little boy who was just a child, seven or eight years old at the time, of the Spanish-American War was King Alfonso XIII. He was the king of Spain until his abdication in 1931. Cyprus. Cyprus, a British colony until its independence. In the top row, we see the inset of King George VI. And then in the lower rows, we see things, examples of Greek artwork and more examples that are indigenous to Cypriot culture. Denmark, once again, uh, not a, uh, a lot of variety here, but uh, in the monarchy of Denmark, we have some images here of King Christian X and Frederick IX, father and son. Images of stamps from the Dutch East Indies, which of course achieved their independence. They were occupied by the Japanese during World War II. And here in the top row, we have images of the young Queen Wilhelmina, who was the Queen of the Netherlands until her abdication in 1948. I love these stamps from Ecuador. These are from Mom's album. These are from uh, 1937 through 39, and Ecuador is celebrating the sesquicentennial of the United States Constitution. So here we have images of Colombia, the personification of America. We have the American eagle with the American flag and the Ecuadorian flag. Ethiopia, an image of the Emperor Haile Selassie, 
who was called the Lion of Judah. He was the emperor of Ethiopia. My grandmother actually met him when she and my step-grandfather lived uh, in Addis Ababa in the late 1950s. And once again here on an Ethiopian stamp, uh, you can see some French inscription because Ethiopia belonged to the International Postal League. France. So many things commemorated in French stamps. In the upper right-hand corner, you see a picture of a nun looking much older in the stamp than she was in person. This is Thérèse of Lisieux. That is the Basilica at Lisieux. And then in the bottom row here, you have heroes of the French resistance um, alongside other major figures in world history. So we have the third stamp in Rembrandt. We have P Petrarch, the Italian poet. And we also have in the lower right-hand corner, Copernicus. Germany, as if we couldn't tell this was Germany, particularly with the uh, many, many images of Hitler that were portrayed on stamps during his tenure uh, as the, uh, the Führer in Germany from 1933 to 1945. And if you wonder why some of the stamps have an overprint on them, so if you look in the second row, it says two million. This is when we had hyperinflation in Germany in the 1920s when the economy collapsed. These are stamps of the German Democratic Republic, which we knew as East Germany until the disillusion uh, of East Germany, the collapse of the Berlin Wall in 1989. But the German Democratic Republic issued its own stamps uh, right up until the collapse of the Berlin Wall. Greece. Here you'd have to know a little bit of uh, gr uh, Greek to decipher these. We have some images here. Uh, the young boy is King Constantine. Um, I believe that the older lady is his grandmother who was named Olga. Uh, Constantine, I believe, is or was the brother of the Queen of Spain, Sophia, and like so many European royals, they are all descendants of Queen Victoria. Guatemala. We have images here of Guatemalan heroes, and the man who um, I'm pointing to is well known in Guatemalan history, a General Lorenzo Montufar, who was an important figure in achieving Guatemalan independence. Hong Kong, the British Crown Colony, which was handed over to China in 1997. Hong Kong was wrested from the Chinese in the Opium Wars of the 1840s and it is uh, the scene of much unrest today. But I loved this uh, portrait of Queen Elizabeth that was very popular, as you can see, on Hong Kong stamps. Hungary, Magyar Poshta. In the first three stamps that you see in the row, we have the crown, the historic crown of St. Stephen. And this would have been probably from the 1930s when there was a much greater connection to the history of the Habsburg past. And the man uh, to whom the arrow uh, is pointing is named uh, Ignat Semmelweis, and he is a great medical hero for the work that he did in understanding sepsis, 
the, the risk of sepsis following childbirth and his, uh, the work that he did in achieving um, sterile, sterile precautions during childbirth saved millions of, of lives. And he's not known um, outside the medical community, but uh, because he was Hungarian, he's honored on several Hungarian stamps. India. India, the stamps that I've chosen to represent here go back to the time that India was considered to be the crown jewel of the British Empire. India achieved its independence from Great Britain in 1947. And in the top row, we can see here many images of King George VI, the king and the emperor. We have uh, an Indian figure with a tri-headed, I, I think it's a lion, and then lots of images of the, the outline of the geographic country of India. Indonesia, Indonesia, which was formerly part of the Dutch East Indies, and the person who was the, the president, some would say the dictator uh, of India, he appears on dozens and dozens of stamps, is Sukarno. And you can see under uh, the price designation, one rupiah, it says the Republic of Indonesia. Ireland. Ireland began printing its own stamps when it became an independent country in 1922. Interestingly, the first one that I have illustrating here is a British stamp with the Irish overprint, which would have been issued at the time of the Irish Civil War, leading to the uh, splitting of Ireland to the Republic of Ireland, the 26 counties of the south, and then the six counties of the north, Northern Ireland, that still remain part of Great Britain. Many of the early Irish stamps show the map uh, of Ireland. We have uh, images of the sword. And it was always a trip to various stamp uh, reference books for me to understand who some of these great heroes are. So in the green stamp in the bottom row, we have Joseph Plunkett, who was a man uh, who was part of the Easter Rising in Dublin in 1916. And I believe that he was uh, put to death um, in prison. Israel. Israel became an independent country in 1947, and the early stamps that we see here are honoring ancient Jewish coins. And I find it curious that in the lower two rows that we see here, we have various zodiac signs represented. Italy. The images in the top row are very much from Art Decoish. They're from the Mussolini era, rather heroic images of the Italian past. In the lower rows, uh, I like these little uh, heads that you see here. And these are all images of uh, various prophets or figures of the Old Testament from Michelangelo's Sistine ceiling. And most countries have kind of a uh, standard postage stamp. So the one that you see from 30 lira must have been the one that was used most often to send letters to the United States. Jamaica. Jamaica chronicling its time as a British colony. Images of George V. Uh, George VI, Queen Elizabeth, and going all the way into the era of Jamaican independence. Japan, again, uh, not knowing any Japanese or Chinese, um, how do I decipher these? You can usually find a symbol on many Japanese stamps uh, in the land of the rising sun. And as I was looking at this, I thought, ooh, ooh, I made a mistake 
pointing to the arrow here, I put a Chinese stamp in my Japanese stamp and I did it, um, be, uh, I realized my error because that's Sun Yat Sen, whom we mentioned earlier. I love these stamps from Jordan, which a family friend bought for me on a trip on makers of uh, world peace. So they range from Nehru to Pope Paul VI, John Kennedy, and then uh, in, the, in the last row we have Charles de Gaulle, uh, Dag Hammarskjöld, Pope John XXIII, uh, and yeah, I mentioned Charles de Gaulle. So the next installment, we will be going from Korea to Venezuela. Thank you. <laughs>